Good morning, Tara and Andy. How are you folks doing this beautiful morning? Looks, looks like we're for in for an Arizona summer day. <clears throat> Somewhere around uh, 43 to 45 degrees Celsius here in Kingman, uh, pretty close to 110 degrees this morning. Yeah, that's uh, up around Set Grease Pass on Old Route 66. And Andy, you appreciate this, of course, being from the river country, but I guess Needles is going to be a tad bit warm today in Bullhead, pushing uh, somewhere north of 50 degrees Celsius. 120 plus. bit of fun this morning. Good morning, Shan. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the book. Uh, sure like to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, my new book, uh, Murder and Mayhem on the Main Street of America, Tales from Bloody 66. Uh, shall we say it was just a walk on the dark side of Route 66 and, and the National Old Trails Road. It was... Uh, Kind of an interesting project, to say the very least. <clears throat> As you can see, i got a bit of a frog in my throat. Oh, Shan, thank you for that, uh, that review there. We're kind of getting things together here, and... Uh, we're going to have some fun this morning. You know, we do, we, we stray into that. We try to have it a mixed bag. Good morning, Lulu, Keith. Kind of a mixed bag here on Sunday. The idea is not to get too dark. Uh, to kind of have a laugh or two and uh, poke fun at politicians, which is pretty easy. And uh, they, they write their own comedic strips, uh, the scripts. So we got to have some fun with that. And talk a bit about the road today. And we've got uh, a couple step backs into history and, you know, a few other fun, fun things to do this morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Still have about uh, two minutes to show time. So um, grab your coffee, your tea, or whatever you're drinking this morning. If it's anything stronger than that, I guess that's okay, too. It is after five. Pull up a chair and we'll chew the fat a bit. Our theme song is by the road crew. Joe and the boys down there in Tennessee and uh, Woody and Don. And I am so honored to have that theme song. Say hello to a new friend on an old road. Take a trip of memories My bio is going to be scary, probably, Andy, but not as scary as yours. I've been writing my biography as a uh, in serial format uh, on as exclusive content on our crowdfunding uh, site as a well, way of saying thank you. And it's a, to put it mildly, it's a darkly comedic uh, adventure. Well, good morning from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Is this your first time joining us, Norman? Good morning, Mr. Harley. How are you doing this morning? <coughs> uh, 
<clears throat> excuse me there, like say I been eating a bit of dirt lately and I think it's catching up with me. Well, this morning, good morning, Anna. Well, here's what we've got. We've got a great, fun, informative, and entertaining program for everyone today. This morning, I'm going to introduce you to an engineer that totally transformed driving, even though he suffered from a debilitating, or, or shall I say, what we view as a debilitating um, handicap. He didn't see it that way. And uh, let's see, last week, as you will recall, for those of you who were with us last week, I shared something a little bit politically incorrect and a little bit of fun, the handbook for the woman driver. Well, we're going to take that just a tad bit further uh, today. I've got a few things uh, to share with you, and um, we're going to take this politically incorrect advertising a step further. Uh, you see on the screen there the Dodge La Femme. This was a car produced by Dodge back around 55. And uh, it was the car designed for the, for the female driver and marketed that way. It came with uh, a matching rain bonnet, uh, makeup mirror and kit in the uh, built into the glove box door, uh, matching rain bonnet, and a few other things. So uh, that's kind of going to be different. Well, we're going to have that going for you today. And we're going to have, uh, let's see, what else we've got on the table? Uh, I've got some things from 1955 Chevrolet uh, to go along with that theme. i got a real exciting, tangible link to Route 66 history to share with you. I can't wait to do this. I, I enjoyed uh, show and tell when I was a kid in school. And uh, so I'm really excited about that. And um, new car depreciation, that's been a subject lately um, in automotive circles. And I got something I want to share with you on that, a little historic perspective. And uh, we'll get the show, I'd like say, on the road with a hearty thank you to Joe and the boys of the road crew for our theme song. Uh, if you're not familiar with the road crew, check them out at roadcrew66.com. And uh, I can't say enough about their music. Great road trip songs. My, one of my favorites, Under the Neon. Tremendous, tremendous song. I think you'll really, really appreciate this. Check that out at roadcrew66.com. Okay. Folks, it looks like we have survived another crazy week in one of the craziest years that I have ever experienced. Am I the only one that feels like the inmates are running the asylum lately? Every day the news is filled with public displays of insanity. The most bizarre press conferences I've ever seen where professionals, experts, and politicians try to convince us the, that, that, the word, that up is down, light is dark, the world is flat. And what scares me the most, these fellows seem to believe the stuff they're telling us. I'm reminded of the old joke, don't tell, tell Ma that I'm a politician. She thinks I'm in prison. Here's one of my favorites this week. This is a quote from uh, Nino Vitale, an uh, uh, elected official in uh, Ohio. This is great stuff. Are, are you tired of living in a dictatorship yet? This is what happens when people go crazy and get tested. He was talking about uh, uh, testing numbers for the COVID-19 situation. Uh, urge, he urged people to stop getting tests because, quote, they give the government an excuse to claim something is happening that is not happening at the magnitude they say it is happening. Well, I'll tell you what, if that ain't a mouthful. Uh, and there are other stories in the news that are almost as crazy, even though they didn't take place in Washington, D.C., here are some of my favorite headlines recently from Kentucky. We had a father in jail after losing an arm wrestling contest to his young son. 
This led the father to go on a shooting spree, throwing the family out of the house and an eight-hour standoff with the police. We have a Louisiana man that faces charges for swimming in a sporting goods store fish tank. Uh, don't even know how this happened. Don't want to know. Uh, uh, delicate operation is a success. Quote, doctors remove mobile phone charger from man's bladder. Don't, don't have a clue. My favorite headline of the week is from a story why we should uh, uh, arguing about not wearing face masks. Quote, doctors now agree that breathing oxygen is linked to staying alive. Oh, boy. My friends, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I can't wait any longer. Like I said, I'm a big fan of show and tell, and i got to share this with you. Look what I have to add to the collection. Can you see that okay there? This is a pinup calendar girl from 1939. And here it says, right on the corner, right on the price, Winslow, Arizona, Union 76, Arizona, U.S. 66, dated 1939. I got to tell you, I was happier than fleas on a puppy to get this for the collection. I'm just a sucker for this kind of stuff. Okay, I promised a little bit of uh, the politically incorrect file. A little brochure from Chevrolet's new power steering, dated 1955. We have uh, the, the female driver on one side, and of course the male driver on the other. Uh, it, it, the interior is really great on this, by the way. It, it's got some just neat stuff. But it says, relax in traffic. Tra traffic now holds no terrors for even the frailest lady. And uh, that's on the other side, it says, uh, take it easy. Uh, female uh, drivers ne no longer need to uh, fear the terrors of the road. And on the male side, it says, take it smooth. A little bit of a snapshot of auto sales and American society circa 1955. Uh, this morning, I'm going to share a story of inspiration. Look, we've, we've just got so much bad news. Let's have some inspiration. You're going to love this story. It's one of my favorites from the automotive industry. Just before Christmas in 1902, a New York City newspaper published a story about a 12-year-old whiz kid and his cousin that had built an automobile from scrap parts and driven it to school. Ten years later, Ralph Teeter graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in mechanical engineering. We'll get you a picture of Mr. Teeter here, very intense fella. Uh, during World War I, Teeter developed a technique for balancing steam turbine rotors <coughs> used in Navy torpedo boat destroyers. Uh, he then rejoined the family company in Indiana where he conceptualized a fluid-operated gear shift to which Bendix bought the rights. Uh, the Teeter family then realigned its company to produce piston rings, renaming it the Perfect Circle Company and installing Ralph as its lead engineer. By 1946, with Ralph at the helm, uh, the company was producing 98% of all piston rings used in the United States, and he contributed to the development of gasoline-powered lawnmowers and electric razors. But his most famous creation, are you ready for this? Ralph Teeter is the man that invented cruise control. All of this is quite amazing. But you know what the most, the most amazing thing about Mr. Teeter? He had been uh, injured as a child. He was completely blind since age five. Look him up. His last name is spelled T-E-E-T-O-R. How's that for a story of inspiration? Pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Fella, it's blind and vents cruise control. Just goes to show you, we cannot always allow things to uh what we what we show is a, an injury or a debilitating injury 
Other people overcome, and that's what we've got to be doing. Okay, automobile depreciation. This has become quite a topic uh, lately in automotive circles because the price of new cars has gotten so ridiculous. A new pickup can set you back 50, 60, 70, 80 grand. And pickup trucks hold their value pretty well, but cars, some are losing 30, 40, 50% of their value uh, in the first year. This is not a recent phenomenon. It's as old as the automobile itself. Uh, one of the things I'm drawn to are guidebooks, uh, travel guides, things of this nature, because uh, buried in all these little things are snapshots of our society changing, auto industry. And uh, for a historian, for some, a writer like myself, uh, all of this stuff find, is just, it, it helps make the story rich. This is the very first Kelly Blue Book uh, from October of 1926. Uh, and if you think you've got problems with depreciation of your cars today, consider this. One of the premier luxury cars in 1920 was Pierce Arrow. A brand new runabout in 1920 had a factory list price of $7,500. That's $96,000 in 2020 dollars. 1926, six years later, that car had a cash value of $450, which is $5,700 today for a little perspective. What happened? Well, technology, for one. Uh, in 1920, Pierce Arrow was a luxury car, but its technology was already dated. And automotive technology was making quantum leaps. And so the luxury car was actually 10 or 15 years behind the times when it was five years old. Now consider the Model T Ford. The 1920 model was a primitive car. It was basically a 1910 car. But it was a little changed from the 1926 version. And as a result, the cars were sold cheap, new, and used. A 1920 runabout sold new for $364, and in 1926 had a cash value of $60. Which car was the better investment? Another thing I find interesting in these old automotive guides are tidbits that find their way into articles, uh, such as those that I'm currently writing for Motoring NZ. Uh, options, information about manufacturers. When you look through this 1926 uh, Blue Book, you find that there weren't a lot of options available, aside from things like brakes on all four wheels, or two windshield wipers, or a speedometer, or two taillights. Simpler times indeed. But one of the things I find interesting with the early Blue Books, like this 1926, is how diverse the auto industry was in these years. I mean, you go through this. Here's the Flint. Here's Ford. Here's Elcar, Elgin, Dort, Cleveland, Chandler, Stearns, Pierce Arrow, Pontiacs, Rios, Packards, Overlands, Lincolns, Hudsons, Hupmobiles, Studebakers, Stutz, Templar, Westcott, Will St. Clair, Durant, Duesenberg, Dianas, Cunninghams, Dozens and dozens and dozens of automobile manufacturers. I, I find it. I find things like this interesting. I guess maybe I'm easily amused. Uh, now this one is a blue book from 1948. Uh, one of the things I, I go in through here is an example of the things that I find really interesting. Uh, did you know that the uh, 1939 and 1940 LaSalle, uh, one of the options was an su electric sunroof? They called it a sunshine roof. But it's, there again, it's interesting how um, primitive cars could be. For example, on some vehicles, the difference between a deluxe model and standard model would be two sun visors and front and rear ashtrays and a touch of chrome trim around the windows. And uh, for us older folks, I won't mention you specifically, Bill, uh, on the 1941 Nash, 
there was an ad for something called Sedan Sleeping Car Conversion. Um, the Nash was really famous for travelers. You could buy a screen deal that would open over the over your windows, and the the beds would uh, the front seats folded down into making a double bed. Um, I have a 1939 advertisement for the Nash that's just unbelievable. It says the new Nash is as catching as the measles and twice as hard to quarantine. And it says uh, the uh, hounds of he spring are nipping at your heel. Come down to the Nash dealer today, borrow a Nash for the afternoon, and take your best girl for a spin. Won't go there either. Uh, also in these uh, the newer books, there's insurance rate tables, tables to calculate monthly payments, and interestingly enough, a special truck section. Um, this one is an NADA guide from uh, 1949. And uh, again, trucks have a separate section. And it's interesting, in these years, trucks were largely viewed as a tool, like a hammer or an axe. Options were sparse. A uh, heater or defroster, maybe. Um, after 1948, in Chevy trucks, you could order a radio. Turn signals were not available. Uh, they became available as a dealer-installed item in 1952 on Chevys. They weren't a factory-offered option until 1955. I hope that wasn't too boring, was it? I really, I really find old guidebooks just incredibly fascinating. And I've shared with you before some of the other guidebooks I have and things around here, like uh, Rand McNally Road Atlases from 1924, with uh, an array of other information aside from maps. And I'm just a sucker for this, and I have this closet behind me just packed with this kind of odd stuff and then file cabinets. and It, it, gets, it helps me when I'm on my writing. It helps uh, keep it from getting boring. You know, I started a while back. Uh, I've been trying to find a way to help businesses. And... Uh, These are challenging times for all of our businesses, and, and you know, along Route 66 and everyone's small business. And I thought, you know, one of the things I do at Jim Hinckley's America is try to uh, help small businesses, communities, museums where I can. And uh, I was on my morning walk about a while back, and I thought, how, how, what can I do to help with, it, with businesses that are on a tight budget? I've lost probably more than 85% of my advertising sponsors this year just because they can't afford to do this. So I hatched up the scheme of coffee cups. Um, a coffee cup sponsor. And uh, this week's coffee cup sponsor is the one and only Roadkill Cafe in Seligman, Arizona and the OK Saloon. Their motto, I hope, is tongue-in-cheek. You kill it, we grill it. Seriously, the food there is very good. It's actually excellent. And the atmosphere is as unique as the restaurant's name. And the owners are... Everything's done with a smile. And uh, as a bonus, you get a front row seat to Route 66 while enjoy enjoying some of my favorites, the elk or buffalo burger or the ribs. Thank you, Debbie, for the cup. And uh, if you have a business, a museum, or community, and uh, you would like it featured on Coffee with Jim, send us a mug. It's that simple. And I'm not going to lie, if you can stick a couple bucks in there, well, God bless, that's even better for, for, for me. And, uh, yeah, just send it along, and we'll get you promoted out here uh, on our Coffee with Jim program. You can contact me for, for more information. And uh, if you'd like more expansive promotion through our travel network, we have advertising sponsor opportunities starting at $6.25 per week. Yeah, now that's tough to beat. Uh, let's see, I've got a couple other things I want to share with you this morning. Uh, Calico's Restaurant, this is my go-to place in Kingman. Uh, for groups, they've got uh, two meeting rooms, one with a private bar, 
Unfortunately, they're temporarily closed again due to the COVID-19 uh, surge here in Arizona and uh, some other things like that. that's just really hampering business. But uh, if you're in the Kingman area, check, make, see if they're open. You cannot go wrong at Calico's. Uh, telling people where to go, you know, uh, I, I joke about that, but that's really been our uh, specialty since 1990. We do that through books, through speaking engagements. Uh, we do that, uh, you know, through a variety of venues. Uh, of course, our website, our blogs, and uh, so we always like to hear from folks. And I, I mentioned uh, our book, Murder and Mayhem. I'm really pleased to say that that uh, received an award. Uh, I want to suppose, say thank you to supporters of our crowdfunding initiative because that has become a very big part of everything we're doing right now. It's uh, really key. And what we're doing is I've been talked into uh, writing my autobiography, and I'm providing that as exclusive content. Uh, on the crowdfunding initiative. And I'd like to give a shout out to some of our advertising sponsors, such as Calico's Restaurant, Victoria Sugar Shack here in Kingman, and Delightful Magical Cuba, Missouri's Mural City, and uh, the businesses that have no business that are still sticking with us, like uh, Gilligan's Route 66 Tours and uh, Route 66 Tours out of Australia. You know, I don't like to beat my gums too much. I like to keep it about a half hour. I don't like to wear out my welcome. And uh, I want to remind you, our audio podcast, Five Minutes with Jim, I've got that up already on our Facebook page. It's uh, And you can find all 85-plus episodes on the podcast page at jimhinkleysamerica.com. And uh, those automotive features that I noted, you can read them at motoringnz.com. And we've shifted the focus a little bit of our podcast uh, on to automotive history. And uh, let's see, before we bid adios, is there anything anyone wants to discuss? Are there any travel questions that I can answer for you? Uh, let's see what we'll go through our questions here, the notes we've received today, and... Uh, Let's see what else we have real quick. I'm always grateful when everybody joins us here. Let's see. Well, Debbie, uh, it is my pleasure to promote the Roadkill Cafe and the OK Saloon. I want to thank you for the coffee cup. Comes in handy. And if we can do anything to promote your business, send us a coffee cup with our coffee cup promotion Jim Urban, good morning. Mr. Bill Daugherty, good morning. Maggie, as far as I know, it is Sunday. Yes, I did have a face mask, Andy. I'm not adverse. Michelle, good morning. Norma, I'm glad you could join us from Virginia and Anna. Always good to see you. Uh, do we have any questions, anything I can answer for you before we get this thing going? Uh, join us next Sunday. We're going to have uh, some other, I've got some other stuff to share with you. There's plenty of good things around here. And uh, I always, I appreciate our time together. It's something I really enjoy doing. And I uh, hope you can join us again next Sunday morning for another episode of Coffee with Jim. Invite your friends. Let's make it a party. Let's see. I've got a couple questions here. I'll answer just real quick. Uh, Andy's here, so he can probably answer this better than me. A Mojave Museum of History and Arts and the Benelli House Museum. Uh, okay. Well, Tracy, going to Williams soon. Uh, you and I... I've got to take an off-road adventure, and I got a place for you. I'm gonna, we got to go up to the Johnson Canyon Railroad Tunnel, and I'll get with you later about that. Going to Williams uh, Pine Country Restaurant, some of the best pie on Route 66. 
That's a good start. Maggie May, it's truly my my pleasure. I like to be positive and upbeat as much as we can. And, um, I'll find out for you on the hours for the Mojave Museum of History and Arts in Kingman and the Benelli House. I don't know if that has changed due to the recent uh, COVID-19 closures here in Arizona, but I will sure check on that for you. Uh, okay, um, the car, uh, fe my f feature photo uh, on the Facebook page, that is a 1947 Chevy, and that Chevy is, uh, believe it or not, it's less than 30,000 original miles. It was parked in a barn sometime back in the 50s, and uh, it's a little rough around the edges. Though. Unbelievably, it was parked in a barn with the windows down. And uh, interior is pretty bad, and the paint uh, is, it leaked. Uh, the roof leaked on the car, uh, the barn roof. Guys, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Andy. There is uh, Mojave Museum of History and Arts, Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4. Face masks are required. Don't shoot the messenger. Uh, we have the Jim Hinckley's America pins available. If you're interested, just contact us, uh, $6.50. And uh, we'll have those up on the Facebook page and the uh, website real soon. Uh, presentations. Okay, uh, well, I am working on that. Um, I'm modern Amish, as you know, and uh, I have promised pay presentations since I can't get on the road or I can't be making them in, in person right now. Uh, I am still working on finding a, a good platform for that. Uh, Vimeo looks like my best bet. Uh, I'm also looking at doing it through Zoom. And uh, I just, I just so far I haven't, uh, I haven't hit on the right idea yet for that. But uh, I, hope, I hope to have that up soon. Let's see if we can get that going. If you're optimistic, you can schedule presentations for this fall. Uh, I tentatively will be, uh, have a presentation at the uh, reunion, the rendezvous in Goffs, California in October. But uh, other than that, my schedule is pretty flatlined. Hey, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I, I just enjoy it when we can get together and have a cup of coffee and, and just visit a spell. Things are so crazy out there. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't hurt, uh, Andy. Uh, Chloride's a pretty unique mining town north of uh, Kingman, uh, on the, just off the highway between Kingman and Las Vegas. And uh, my wife's family has a pretty lengthy... <coughs> ah, well, Route 66 Passports. Uh, well, you can do this several ways. Uh, check out Route66Navigation.com. Uh, I, I really recommend, if you're traveling Route 66... Uh, purchase the subscription to the navigation app. It's a great investment. It seems a little spendy, but it's not. Route 66 Passport. Uh, <clears throat> if you can't find them, you can contact me, and uh, I can get these to you for $10 plus shipping. Um, but they're available all along the road, and if you go to route66navigation.com, um, they should have a list of where the passports are available. And uh, it's really a neat little deal. And if you put this together with the Route 66 Navigation app, it uh, makes for just a really good travel companion. And this is really the ultimate customizable souvenir. They've got uh, also on Route66Navigation.com, they have a free ebook that you can order. And uh, it talks about how to plan your trip. Uh, has places where you can get your stamps. A little bit of trivia. Artwork from Joyce Cole. So it's pretty neat. If you can't find that, just let me know. Andy, do you think somebody would really want a Jim Hinckley show? I'm not sure anybody wants to see me beat my gums that much. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, I guess what we're going to do is... Uh, Bid audios for the week.
And we'll do this again next week. And please invite your friends. And uh, like I say, let's make this a coffee party. And um, if you have any questions you want me to answer on the show, send them along during the week. You can contact me through our website, jimhinkleysamerica.com, or here on Facebook through Messenger. And uh, we'll get them answered. Folks, take care, and we will see you soon.